In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a website. WordPress is currently the most popular way to make a website, so we're gonna use that. The other important part of making a website is where your website lives, also known as hosting. And for that, we're gonna use DigitalOcean. I have $200 of free credits for you down below to get you started, so check that out, and then let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so once you're in your DigitalOcean dashboard, you can come up here and click on Create droplets and on the next page we're going to pick where your droplet physically lives so i'm in the united states that's where my visitors are going to be coming from so pick the region closest to you and your visitors next up we come down here under choose an image in the marketplace tab that's where we install wordpress on our server so wordpress 6.1.1 is slightly old but i'm going to show you later on in this video how to update it to the latest and greatest version of wordpress Okay, coming down here, we have lots of options for what type of resources that your server wants or needs. Uh, basically, for most people starting out, you can come down here and select a regular droplet. Uh, the default $24 a month is a little bit more than most people need. So you can go as low as $6 a month just to try it out. And then as your website grows, gets more visitors, you need more resources, then you can easily scale up to one of these more premium plans. Okay, so down here to log into our server, we need a password. The password is, you're gonna make the password, so I'm gonna paste mine in here. I already have my password ready. And then you do the same. And then the one last option, we have some other options down here about backups and monitoring. You can select any one of those. The one I do suggest you do is enable IPv6. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video. Um, you can call your host name, whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine WordPress. And then finally down here, create our droplet. So when that's finished in about a minute, I'll catch back up with you guys. All right guys, that step has finished. As you can see here, our WordPress website is accessible at this IP address, but what's better than an IP address is a domain name. So next I'm gonna show you how to point your domain name to your IP address. This is optional. If you don't have a domain name, you can technically use the IP address and share that with people, but much, much better is a domain name. So I have my domain registered with Google domains. This is no longer going to exist very, very soon, but the concept here is extremely similar. You get a domain name from anywhere pretty much, and then you go into your DNS settings and add a few records. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So here's my Google domains dashboard for tonyboney.com. And what you wanna do is come into your DNS settings. And what we're gonna do is add four different records. Okay, so the first one is going to be an A record. And what we're gonna do is point it to that IP address. So let's go back over here and copy the IP address and then pull that back up. And all we have to do is paste that in here. So we have an A record, the time to live value, the default is just fine, and then the IP address. So we're gonna do that again, but this time we're gonna do it for www yourdomain.com. It's also gonna be an A record and it's gonna to point to the exact same IP address. Two more here, we're gonna create a quad A record, an AAA record, AAA -A 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 record, and that's gonna to point to an IP version six address. So you basically have, uh, let's click into here, into your uh, droplet. You have an IP version four address, which is this one. Maybe you've seen something like that before. And then this much longer one, an IP version six address. So that's basically in very, very short, simplified terms, like the future of the internet. Um, don't worry about it too much, but it's a good thing to have. So let's make some records for that. So we're gonna do an AAA -A -A record for that. And then www.tonyboney.com, same thing, a quad A record for that very long IP version six address. So let's save that. Okay, that's finished. Let's go back over here and let's see if that works. Let's open up a new tab and I'm gonna to go to tonyboney.com and see what we get. And this is good, we see something. It says basically telling us what to do next. Please log into your droplet with SSH to configure the WordPress installation. So you can do that on your computer, on a Mac, you can use terminal, on Windows you can use command prompt, but a much easier built-in way to access your droplet via SSH is right from within your DigitalOcean dashboard. And you can come down here to the access section and we can use the droplet console to log in as root and access the droplet via SSH. Now, if that's over your head, I have other videos on this channel about explaining exactly what SSH is, but very simplified, it's a way to interact at the server level with your, uh, with your website, with your server. So basically that has loaded for me already. Right here, it's asking for a domain name. 
for a subdomain, I'm going to type in TonyBoney.com and then our email address and a username and a password. Now this is the second password that we have, or I guess technically our third password. You have one for your DigitalOcean account, you have one for your server, and then you have one for WordPress itself. So go ahead and pick a unique password for your WordPress website, type that in, and then my blog is going to be called Tony Teaches Tech. Hit enter. Is this information correct? Yes, hit enter. Now, this next step here, would you like to use Let's Encrypt to configure SSL, also known as HTTPS, for your new site? Yes, that's a very good idea. It's always important to have a secure website. So let's type Y, hit enter. Go ahead and type your email again. This next part basically asks if they can send you some marketing emails. I'm going to say no, hit enter. And for most people, we want to activate HTTPS for all of our domain names, including the www subdomain. So go ahead and hit enter to do that. It's going to go ahead and do its thing. It might take a minute, but when that's finished, we'll catch up again. Okay, that's done. Let's go over some of the main things that just happened. So basically, we installed an SSL certificate. We have a scheduled task to automatically renew the certificate, so you'll never have to worry about uh, manually doing that in the future. Uh, we have WordPress enabled at your URL. So we can go to that URL on the browser to complete the setup of your site. And then down here, we installed a plugin called fail to ban, which we'll take a look at in just a second. So let's first go to our website in a browser. So tonyboney.com. This time we see the default landing page for WordPress. Um, if we want to access our admin dashboard, we can go to your URL slash WP admin and we can log in. So I'm going to log in with the credentials that we just created earlier. Go ahead and click on login. And this is the WordPress admin dashboard. Now, some of the best practices you can do is keep your WordPress software up to date. So we can do that by clicking up here. We can update from WordPress version 6.1.1 to 6.4.1. So let's go ahead and update that now. This doesn't take too long and within 10 seconds we now have the latest and greatest version of WordPress like I promised you guys. Now the one practice that I always recommend after you set up a WordPress website is to come into tools, site health and kind of see what's going on. And as you can see we have one critical issue with that fail to ban WordPress plugin. It's not running. Now this is kind of an advanced uh, technical thing to get this up and running. I'm not sure why DigitalOcean doesn't automatically enable this but we basically come back into our terminal window and we can check the status of fail to pan to see if it's running or not we can do service fail to ban status and you can see here that it is inactive so in order to get that to run we can do service fail to ban start and then if we check the status again we can see that now fail to ban is active and running so if we come back into our wordpress website our site health page refresh we should see that critical issue go away and it does now we still have six recommended improvements which i will take care of each and every one of these in this next video 15 important things to do after installing wordpress check that out next subscribe and i'll see you over there